If you guys liked the 151 watt hour flash fish portable soil generator, you are gonna love its oldest brother. Let's open it up. All right, what we have here is the flash fish P60. This is the biggest solar generator that flash fish builds. Um, as you can tell, this one is fairly light. It's only about five pounds. I think this one, is more like 13 pounds. This unit looks like it came about 60% full of battery. So I'm gonna go ahead and charge it up. And then after it's full, uh, we'll go ahead and talk about all the features it has. Uh, we'll do a capacity test. And uh, we'll talk about some pros and cons. All right, we've had this thing plugged in for a while. Uh, it's showing that it's full, so we're, let's go ahead and unplug it and uh, talk about the features. All right, this thing has so many options, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, well, first, actually, let's first start with taking this little screen protector. Oh, that's so nice, there we go, okay. All right, okay, this thing, it has three different types of outputs. It has AC output, it has DC output, and then it has also USB output. Uh, the AC output, you turn it on by this button right here, the AC button, and it will turn on these two AC outputs. Uh, these are 110 volts and they're pure sine wave. So that's, that's nice. Uh, if you want to turn on the DC output, you press the DC button and it has four 5521 barrel plugs and a cigarette lighter adapter. And then if you want to turn on the USB outputs, you press the USB button and you have your three USB-A ports and a USB-C port uh, that will charge up to 18 watts. And then on the input side, you have a barrel plug that you can plug in your, to your, for your wall adapter, uh, and that charges it at 90 watts. Uh, and then you also have a, I believe that's an XT60 port that you can charge with up to a 100 watt solar panel. On the side, there's a fan. That's, that's an intake fan. Uh, the back has nothing, and then on this side there's a, a, just a vent for the air to escape. Uh, the top has this nice, has a nice rugged handle, and I like that it has this this little rubber grip on the bottom, so it makes it so it's nice, it's a nice grip, nice and easy to carry. And then the bottom. Just has a couple of rubber feet and then uh, some information about the portable generator itself. Then also there is a power button that all it does is it just turns on the display to show you uh, the, the battery life. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and just check all these ports to make sure they all work and to see what the voltage, voltages are. We're gonna go ahead and check the USB first and we're getting 4.97, 4.97, 4.97 and 5.0. So this orange one must be a, uh, a USB 3 quick charge. All right, next let's check the uh, the DC output. All right, we're getting 12.25 volts on the DC uh, cigarette lighter. And then the barrel plugs. Let's go ahead and just plug this little adapter in, make it easier. Yep, 12.25 on the barrel plug as well. Now it says 12.25. Uh, and this is a fully charged battery. This, uh, these ports are uh, unregulated, so the voltage of these ports will go down as the battery is depleted. So that's kind of important if you're running something that is sensitive to the amount of voltage that you have. All right, next let's check the AC ports. And yeah, 110.7 and 110.5. I keep looking at this top, this top, uh, I keep, I keep thinking that this is a uh, a wireless charger on top, which I feel like it's a perfect spot. I wonder if in their next upgraded version, 
they will include a wireless charger on here because it seems like that's exactly what this is for but there is no wireless charger on top at all all right next we're going to test these ac outlets and first we're going to test to see what happens if you put too big of a load on and then we're going to see if it can actually max out at 600 watts all right what i have here uh, is a uh, a little space heater and i'm going to turn it on its low setting and i believe that's right around 700 watts so we're going to see what happens when we try to do that. All right, turning it on low. And it just shuts off. And if you want to turn it back on, you just got to hit the AC button and it shuts it, it turns it right back on. So it automatically shuts off uh, if you have uh, a too, too big of a load on the unit. All right, next we have this halogen lamp and it should be right between 400 and 500 watts. So let's go ahead and test it first to make sure it works. I'm actually gonna have to turn the flash fish upside down for this test to plug in the kilowatt meter. And let's go ahead and plug this light in to see if it stays on. And it's using right at uh, 367, 368 watts. Okay, so that works. But what we're going to do is we're going to try to get up to, we're going to see how high we can go before this thing shuts off. So I got a power bar here. All right, and now I'm just gonna start plugging stuff in and we're gonna see how many, how many watts we can get this up to because it says it will do five or 600, but in the documentation, it says that you, it will only really go up to 560. So we're gonna test that. So first we're gonna turn on this lamp. Next, we're gonna plug in a fan, put this fan on high. And then next we have a 100 watt condensed light bulb, which usually pulls right around 90 watts. All right, so we got 544 watts, 545 watts coming out of this unit. Let's go ahead and plug in something else. I have another fan here, 565, 566. So it's holding its own, it's holding its own pretty well. All right, and I have another fan this is probably going to make it go over. We're going to put this one on low. And it just shut everything off. So let's try it without this small fan. Go and turn the AC back on. Oh, the fan on the unit just kicked on. Let's go ahead and turn everything back on. Our watts are 515. Let's crank it up a little bit more. Oh, look at that, 597. Let's see if we try to give it a tiny bit more power. I'm going to switch this fan to the next level. 600, 609, 606, and it just turned off. But that goes to show that this can actually power up to 600 watts. All right, and then when I turn it back on, you can see that the battery, the, the battery level, that SOC level is actually going back up because the voltage of these batteries are starting to rise back up because it doesn't have such a heavy load on it. What I do wish on this display, I wish there was a, a state of charge indicator as in a percentage. This does the job. It shows like in 20% increments. It would be nice if it showed, uh, you know, the amount of watts going out or the amount of watts coming in. Uh, also, a percentage state of charge would be nice. All right, let's go ahead and check the inputs. All right, if it's charged into the wall. Yeah, and again, it just kind of shows it flashing and it shows it's, it's charging between 80 and 100%. That's just so general. I don't, I wish there was more information. But the wall input works. The, the cigarette lighter adapter works just fine. And now let's uh, go outside with a 50 watt solar panel and see if it will charge with solar. Unfortunately, I do not have, uh, I, 
like I said before, I think this is an XT60 connector. I don't have one of those. Um, and I don't have a solar panel that will plug into this. So we're going to have to use the barrel plug for the input. Okay, and there's our 50 watt solar panel. It's plugged into the flash fish and you can see that it is charging. So that's nice. That means there's three ways of charging this flash fish. There is AC power, there's a cigarette lighter adapter, and then there's also solar. So that's always nice to have a lot of options. All right, all right, sorry this video is kind of all over the place. I'm excited about being able to see what this thing can do. If you had watched my previous video where I was testing this uh, while camping, you saw that I tried to use this vacuum right here to vacuum out the tent. Uh, and it didn't work with this little small flash fish because this only powers uh, up to 5 amps at 12 volts. So that's only, what, 60 watts, and this uses over 100. So I want to see if it will work with this big guy. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the DC. Plug it in. Turn it on. And it still doesn't work. That's... That's super disappointing. I thought this would work. Let's see if it works with this little adapter. Nope. So this little vacuum is still too much power uh, for these DC outputs. Even though these DC outputs say they do 10 amps and this only draws 8.8 .8 amps, I'm guessing the initial draw of it is too much. But still, that's pretty disappointing. I can't even use a small vacuum with a, a full-size DC plug. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and charge this thing up all the way to 100% and then I'm going to do a capacity test on the AC side to see what kind of efficiency we get. Alright everyone, here is my uh, AC test setup. I have an extension cord plugged into the flash fish which it has a kilowatt reader. Uh, here's my camera that I'm using to record it. And then I also have my other flash fish that is powering this camera because this this is actually my Note 4 phone, so it's super old. So I gotta make sure and keep it plugged in all the time. This I'm gonna use this fan, and it will run at right around 108 watts. So that will be actually a perfect um, 0.2C test because this is a 560 watt uh, solar power station. So. Let's go ahead and start the test and see what kind of efficiency we get. All right, well that test is done. Uh, it looks like it came out to about, uh, what, 455 watt hours. So uh, that equates to a right around 80 to 81%, which actually is not bad. Most inverters run at about 85% uh, efficiency, well, uh, between 85 and 90%. So. 80% efficiency for a solar generator like this, um, I believe is okay. I've seen some that are much worse. I would say I'm satisfied with the, the performance of the AC conversion. Now it's time to charge this thing back up and I believe it says that from uh, zero to full, it will take about seven hours on the AC charger. I think I'm done with the initial review of this flash fish a portable solar generator. Some of the things I like about it is, well, first of all, the AC, the AC outputs. Um, I liked how they, you could get 600 watts out of them. Um, even though in the manual, it did say that you really shouldn't go over 560. Uh, we pushed 600 and it ran it. I, w I don't really know how long it could run that, but I, you wouldn't really want to run it at 100% uh, for an extended amount of time anyway. The fact that it, uh, you know, that it just shuts off if it gets overcurrent, uh, you know, I like that. So, so it won't, you know, bur it won't burn up. I like the number of charging options that you have on this. I mean, you can charge up to eleven things, all at the same time. That is pretty nice. Uh, the AC conversion, uh, it's not bad, eighty percent. You know, I'll take that. And the all-around feel of the unit, it feels very solid. I like the, I like the, the plastic that it's made out of. Uh, it feels really good. The handle, I like how they have this little rubber section below right here. There's a little, that little rubber section. I like how they have that. It makes it so it's comfortable to carry 
uh, you know, even though it weighs between 12 and 13 pounds, that little, that little bit of rubber, it really does help. So yeah, along with the negative stuff, um, I really wish that the inputs, I wish they were either on the side or on the back. Uh, I don't like how you have to have this cord sticking out of the front to charge it. I wish, I, I mean, in my opinion, I, I wish it was in the back. That's just me though. Uh, some people might like it because that way they can put it somewhere, uh, you know, kind of tuck it into like some sort of cubby or something. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't recommend that because you're going to need these air vents. If you, if you push this thing, it needs to have airflow or it'll burn up. That's why I wish this input was, was more, was located somewhere else. Um, also, I wish that these were regulated, uh, DC outputs. I believe if these were regulated, they would run that little vacuum that I have. The, the screen. I wish the screen had more information. Uh, I wish it had a better state of charge indicator. Uh, a percentage would be would be great. Um, also, if it had something where it showed how much AC power I was using, like how many watts of AC I was using, how many watts of DC I was using, and maybe even how many uh, how many watts of input power I was putting into it. Uh, that information for me. I just like having that information because I feel like the more information you have, the better you are off. I know this is kind of stretching it, but I really wish it had a, uh, a wireless charger on the top here. Uh, I think that would really complete the whole, uh, the whole, the whole charging uh, situation where you can, it has so many options already that a wireless would just complete the whole package. All right, with all that, I think I'm done. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And you know, if, uh, if you like my channel and you want to see more of it, go ahead and subscribe. It really helps out. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.